Hi, Dr. Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat Deal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question is actually a continuation of our comorbidity questions. Comorbidities are diseases that occur along with autism, and there are several comorbidities. And healing comorbidities is a great way to heal autism. So, this week's question, autism comorbidity treatment for optimal outcomes, neurotransmitter disorders, what works? Let me get into that. We'll go to PowerPoint. Autism comorbidity treatment for optimal outcomes, neurotransmitter disorders, what works best? As mentioned, comorbidity is defined as a simultaneous presence of two chronic diseases in a person. Treatments for some of the comorbidities are well known, therefore there is no reason for your child to suffer with certain comorbidities. Here's a list of the autism comorbidities that are commonly and well known. Seizure and epilepsy, neurotransmitter disorders, sleep disorders, metabolic abnormalities, immune disorders, and gastrointestinal disorders. In this video, I'm going over neurotransmitter disorders. So there are three. First one is monoamine, and that deals with dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. There's amino acid, and that deals with glutamate and GABA. I'm sure everyone's heard of GABA. Cholinergic, and that deals with acetylcholine. Now, there are two drugs that are approved for the treatment of certain autism behaviors. They are 5-HT7 antagonists, which is involved in serotonin. So it's really important to understand neurotransmitter disorders that are comorbid with autism since there are FDA approved drugs to target autism behaviors. So let's get into neurotransmitter disorders a little more. Let's go through the first one together, monoamine. Monoamine neurotransmitter disorders are a diverse group of neurological syndromes characterized by problems in the biosynthesis, degradation, or transport of dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and serotonin. So the two FDA-approved drugs for autism behaviors affect the serotonin. So those two drugs are more involved in the monoamine aspect of neurotransmitter disorders. Monoamine neurotransmitter disorders have neurological features that are primarily attributed to the deficiency of cerebrodopamine, serotonin, or both. So it's those two neurotransmitters, or both, that are associated with monoamine neurotransmitter disorders. Many neurotransmitter disorders mimic other neurological disorders and therefore are frequently misdiagnosed. So when you are dealing with comorbidities with autism, it's really important to make sure you're working with a healthcare provider that is very knowledgeable in both autism as well as its comorbidities because you don't need a misdiagnosis to deal with on top of autism. That will not be fun. Monoamine, learnings from ADHD. Okay, so monoamine and autism. What do we know? Unfortunately, there's not too much information. But dopamine and norepinephrine neurotransmitters can be manipulated through medications that are commonly used for ADHD. And that's great. ADHD is not exactly autism, so that's not great. However, look at the numbers. 41 to 78 percent of those with autism also have ADHD as a comorbidity. That's pretty profound. So if you're trying to heal autism and you don't, and you also don't take into account ADHD, you're really only getting half the picture. So it's really important to understand what other comorbidities your child could have because with autism, there's frequently other comorbidities that your child is also dealing with. So ADHD medications work positively for counteracting hyperactivity in the autism population. That's great. However, adverse events are more severe in the autism population. So there's, there, they've seen an increase in agitation. Atomoxetine helps with ADHD-like symptoms, but not social interaction. So ADHD is a comorbidity, but you can't 
treat ADHD and someone with autism and completely ignore the autism. So both comorbidities have to be taken into account at the same time while you're treating them. Okay, the second type of neurotransmitter disorder is amino acid. So inhibitory excitatory balance. Glutamate is our major excitatory neurotransmitter. And GABA mediates most inhibitory actions in our central and peripheral nervous system. And it's also involved in processing pain. So it's important to understand this inhibitory excitatory balance. Besides in autism, abnormal changes in GABA and glutamate are seen in disorders of consciousness, such as vegetative states and psychiatric disorders, such as depression and schizophrenia. And there are many of those with autism that are also diagnosed with schizophrenia. So you can see how there's certain overlap of autism with other diseases. And this is the importance of understanding comorbidities. Research has suggested that GABA and glutamate play a role in the constitution of the higher self and consciousness. So that's hugely important and how it's related to autism because many of the therapies that we do with our children or the educational approaches that we do with our children is to teach them about the higher self and consciousness and perspectives. So inhibitory excitatory balance has more of an effect rather than just some kid bouncing off the wall. So again, it's really important to understand the true science of inhibitory and excitatory balance. It's not just one thing. So there are several medications that target GABA and glutamate neurotransmission, and they've been explored in those with autism. There are two drugs that show promising results, and there's quite a bit of research looking at different pharmaceuticals. I know most people who are watching my videos aren't too interested in using drugs to modulate any of these disorders, but I do put that information there just so you have it. There's also the supplement L-carnosine that modulates GABA, and research has shown that it improves core ASD symptoms and language. And there are three drugs that target glutamate or GABA, and they've undergone several clinical trials in the autism population. So there are definitely options when you're looking to rebalance excitatory and inhibitory in your child. So there's pharmaceutical options as well as supplement options that have been studied. None FDA approved but they have been studied. Now for the third type of neurotransmitter disorders, cholinergic. Acetylcholine releases from the frontal cortex and hippocampus, and it has several functions, one of which is motor activity. Now many of our children have either gross motor skill deficiency or fine motor skill deficiencies. So it's important to learn a little bit more. Cholinergic receptors are involved in regulating the spinal locomotor network, as well as play key roles in memory and learning, as well as sensory, motor, and autonomic processes. And many of our children have issues with all of those. So again, it's really important to get your child in front of a healthcare practitioner that can separate out what symptoms from your child are from autism and what could be from a neurotransmitter disorder. So if your child is dealing with sensory, moto, or autonomic process issues, it would be wise to have a discussion like this with your physician. So go even one step further. I mean, neurotransmitters, whew, it's, that's some fascinating research. It's, it's amazing the profound effects neurotransmitters have in our bodies. So, as an example, in the airways, acetylcholine is not only a neurotransmitter released by parasympathetic nerves, but it's also a hormone derived from non-neuronal cells and can exert local control of cellular function in the absence of vagal connection. So that's pretty profound. Little summaries, there are several medications that target acetylcholine that have been investigated. And one of those do show improvements in language and social functioning, 
for those with autism. The drugs approved for the treatment of certain autism behaviors are 5-HT7 antagonists, which are involved in regulation of serotonin. These are FDA approved drugs for the treatment of certain autism behaviors. So they're targeting serotonin. The enteric nervous system is located in our gut. So it's an extremely important nervous system that we cannot forget when we're trying to have an optimal functioning body, the enteric nervous system is central to that. Research shows that the entire glutamatergic neurotransmitter machinery is present in the enteric nervous system. That's in our gut. So please do not think that these neurotransmitters are only located in our brain. They're not at all. GABA is a modulator of GI activity as well. There's more serotonin in our gut than in our brain. And this is why special diets are very efficient in healing autism and rebalancing the body. If you're wanting to heal autism, a strong foundation is the use of special diets. Many parents learn this information and they say, okay, what, what kind of supplements should I give my child to, to rebalance some of these neurotransmitter disorders? It's not as if with a supplement you can just open your child's head and sprinkle a supplement on their brain. It doesn't work that way. You take the supplement, it goes to your gut first. And look how important neurotransmitters are for the nervous system that's located in our gut. So this is why special diets are a strong foundation to use in healing autism. It's the most efficient way. The facts don't lie. And here are some references if you want to do further reading.